Hello, everybody. Welcome to Encounter Balance. My name is Jeff. Today, I wanted to do a short response to a couple of videos that Sam DiMercurio from the YouTube channel Chalice and Chains has put out recently. One of them is called DND Is There a Right Way to Play? The other is called Why Do We Try and Make DND Into Something It Isn't? And he's basically talking about fifth edition DND specifically and, and other versions of DND and more generally and asking. If they were designed to provide a narrative and immersive game, and if other systems might do it better, and whether or not we should look to the design intent of a system when we implement it into our games, and how much of it is okay to take away and change, and how much of it should be kept intact as the designers put out. And to be fair to him, he wasn't trying to make any hard stances that there is a correct way to play any system, and, and that to use a system in a way that the designers intended didn't intend is wrong. He didn't you know, make any strong statements like that. He was just kind of talking generally about it. And I think it's an interesting point to talk about. I wanted to jump in with a couple of my ideas as far as you know, what an RPG system can and should do as far as gaming experience goes, because I think that I disagree uh, respectfully but strongly with the way that he views the topic. I wanted to kind of throw in my opinion. So when we look at the question of what does an RPG system do, you know, what experience is provided by the system and the mechanics, the way that I look at it is that an RPG system, the mechanics of the game, are there to provide resolution to a conflict or a situation. So if, if a player is trying to overcome an obstacle, and there is a, any chance of failure, the mechanics are there to dictate the results, as well as provide limitations and possibilities for players as far as abilities and skills that they might have, ideas for background information, depending, maybe setting information depending on the system. And I really don't think that an RPG system really has to stretch too much further than action resolution. Um, so the reason that I make this point is in his video, Sam mentions that the basis of Dungeons & Dragons is combat. That that's the focus of the game, that's the primary intent of the game, and that everything else is, to some extent, secondary to combat. And that the system may not be designed, or the mechanics may not support a more narrative gaming experience, or a more exploration-based game or political intrigue-based game, um, and that it's not necessarily designed to create an immersive and narrative game. And I actually disagree pretty strongly with that idea. Um, and the reason being is, so for me, an immersive and narrative game has nothing to do with the system that the game is played in, or at least very little to do. Like unless you're playing an incredibly crunchy game, you know, like Pathfinder or, or worse as far as crunch, and I don't mean worse as in bad, I just mean more, com more complicated, more mechanical. Like, unless you're reaching into the, the, to the more crunchier systems, the system does not dictate what's narrative. The system does not dictate how immersed I am in any capacity. I'd say it provides almost zero immersion or narrative benefits to me. For me, in my experiences, a narrative and immersive game is created almost entirely by the players that are in the game. Like There is no amount of narrative encouragement a system can provide to a, to a group who's not interested in a narrative game that will make them play more narratively. Like They will still play it like a game. And there's no system within reason. You now, it at least looking at a system like 5th edition, there's nowhere near the complexity required to, to break immersion, at least for me and a lot of the people that I play with. And it comes so much more down to the people that are in the game and the way that they react to situations, the, the highlights that they put into the game, the way that they play their characters in the different situations. That's what makes a game narrative, not necessarily the mechanics of the game. And kind of a case in point, if you look at a system like Fate, which is touted as this pure narrative, this only story, very little mechanics system, which it can definitely be that, 
you can still play Fate very gamey and very mechanically and very tactically. And it works actually fairly well, I think, more, more in that style than people give it credit for. You know, it's very easy for it to become a game of, especially with things like aspects that, take, that can take you out of the immersion by kind of interfacing with the mechanics as a player instead of as a character. You know, and if people focus on those elements, you're going to lose that narrative immersive game just as fast as you as you would in a in a slow or dull combat in fifth edition. You know, if you have people who are, oh, I'm going to use my my shoot ability to uh, to take a shot at this uh, carefully, and I'm going to invoke my high concept of being the best marksman in the land to get plus two to my roll, and I'm going to use the boost that was gained last round to gain another plus two to my roll. I that's all completely within the mechanics of fate, and there's not really anything immersive or narrative about that. And, and you've interfaced with the mechanics exactly as intended. And I think the same thing applies to 5th edition. You know, if you just say, I roll an attack roll, I roll a 16, I hit, I hit him with my axe and do 8 damage. You know, to me, that's basically the same as the fate equivalent of, of, of talking only about the boosts and aspects. Like, you've interfaced only with the mechanics, but the immersion and the narrative is supplied by the player who's playing the character. And that goes for both Fate and for 5th edition, or for any other system, for that matter. Where it more comes down to the way that the player intends to interact with the system, not what the system dictates mechanically. Especially in regards to to combat, which, as Sam makes a fair point, the mechanics of D&D are largely combat mechanics, but there's a good reason for that. It's because combat requires the most action resolution and the most it requires the most in order to provide a fair outcome to combat. And the point that D&D does not have a lot of mechanics that support immersion or exploration or political intrigue or things like that. I guess my main question is what mechanics do you need to have in a game to support that? D&D doesn't have mechanics for exploration not because exploration is not as important as combat, but because exploration is a story told by the DM. It's an environment created in a picture painted and not a rule set in a book. And I think if you were to have mechanics that supported exploration or mechanics that supported political intrigue, that that would make the game less immersive and less narrative and take the magic out of exploration not enhance the experience of exploration and the same goes for political intrigue and conversation and and swaying people with words no amount of mechanical support or lack thereof has any indication of whether or not the system supports those experiences because those experiences are ones of story and of people not of games and mechanics so i don't really see how 5th edition not having mechanics that support exploration or support political intrigue or, or immersive gameplay has anything to do with whether or not the system is designed to use those aspects. Because I don't really see how mechanics relate to those aspects. And in fact, I think putting mechanics to those aspects would lessen them and cheapen them, not enhance them, especially in regards to a narrative immersive experience. And I guess just a, a point about systems in general, as far as you know, what a system is designed to do and whether or not you should use this system or that system. Now, obviously, some systems that are very focused, you know, are going to be ideal for certain settings. You know, it would be tough to play a sci-fi or a Star Wars game in D and D Fifth Edition. And I'm not saying that Fifth Edition has to be a one size fits all system or that everybody has to like playing it. But I think to say that it detracts narratively or detracts immersively or doesn't allow exploration in the way that other systems do is not giving it a fair opportunity and it's not giving it a fair shake for something that should be supplied by the group and not by the game. And just as far as systems in general go, now I see a lot of people trying to like basically find the perfect system for their game, which I can respect in a way and I'm not saying that's bad. Just like um, any of the points that I'm making, you know, it's just the way that I see it, and I'm not trying to make any definitive hardline statements here. But no system, at least no system that I've ever seen, and it seems to be the case for most people, 
No system will be exactly the game that you want. Every system will require some tweaking in order to make it feel just right or as close to just right as you can make it. So I don't see any reason that people who like 5th edition, for the most part, should switch to another system just because that system you know, supposedly provides more narrative experience, which I, I disagree with, as I've said before. But if you can make a tweak to 5th edition because you, you, know, you like the spells, you like the, the classes, you like the abilities, you like the attributes, if you like those features, then you, know, you shouldn't switch to Fate. You should tweak 5th edition because that'll get you the game that you want with a couple minor changes. Where you know fate might solve one problem, it could create five more in its place, which doesn't really help you, and it doesn't help the game, and it doesn't help the players. And I think just in general, the the whole system hopping thing gets a little bit overplayed, as far as you know, the perfect system, at least as far as general systems go. Like obviously, you know, if you're going to play a Star Wars game, you know, having a Star Wars system is probably going to help you because that world has a very specific feel that it's aiming for. And just at the end of the day, kind of like what Sam said in his video, if the group is having fun, then you're doing it right. And there's really kind of no two ways about that one. And I'm not trying to say that people should switch systems or they shouldn't switch systems. You know, people should play the game that they want to play. But I still, I don't think it's fair to call 5th edition um, a non-narrative game or a game that focuses on combat. Because just because the mechanics dictate that that's the focus, again, that's more of a function of action resolution than it is of game design intent. And I think that that saying that it can't do exploration or it can't do immersive gameplay or it can't do intrigue or conversation or you know conspiracy plots, things like that, I don't see how the mechanics necessarily, again, I don't see what mechanics you would want to have in there because those are elements of role play. Those are elements of, of characters interacting. And there, you don't need a system to tell you how to do that. That all comes down to the people in the group who will play that way, whatever system they use, whatever game they're in. So this is a little bit of a rambly video um, or audio. And I'm not quite sure how well I made the point, but hopefully it came across all right. And. I'd be happy to discuss this point a little further and a little, hopefully a little bit more streamlined in the future, as I think it's definitely an important point to talk about and one that people tend to, I think, come to a conclusion one way or the other on, perhaps a little bit too quickly, as far as whether or not you should use 5th edition or other systems and why and what each system can accomplish and what each system should accomplish. And I think with a little bit of thought and a little bit of working it out, you, know, you can kind of come to the conclusion that 5th edition and other systems you know, can accomplish a lot of the same goals uh, and that the differences are, are not quite as stark in elements of narrative and roleplay as some people make it out to be, uh, I think, unfairly. So another couple points that I could make about combat in 5th edition, I think I will save for another video. Um, that I will hopefully be recording pretty soon about, you know, basically I, ha I have this idea. It's a little bit controversial, um, but not really that much, actually, that combat in D&D &D is not the opposite of immersion, immersion, and it's not the opposite of a narrative game, and that all those elements can coexist, but people often don't go through them correctly. So if that is an interesting idea to you, then please be on the lookout. Please subscribe to the channel. And please look out for that video because it will be coming out within the next couple days, ideally from when this video is posted. So thanks anybody who listened to this. It went on a little long and I rambled a lot, but hopefully there was some sort of point that you could gather from it. And yeah, everybody, thanks for, for listening and I'll catch you next time. I'll catch you next time. I'll catch you.